Hey guys, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing my February wrap up and I am so excited to be filming this because I had a really, really good reading month. I started to read a lot more towards the end of February and with it being a very short month as well, I'm actually quite happy to say that I read a total of four books this month, which to me, like I always say, is quite a lot. Anything I think more than two is a lot to me. But yes, I am excited to share with you guys what I read during the month. The first book that I read was Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend. This is the third book in the Morrigan Crow series. So if you didn't know, this is a middle grade series following Morrigan Crow, who has these magical abilities, which she doesn't realize. She ends up trialing for a very prestigious magical school and her adventures, I guess, ensue from there. You follow her and her classmates who all have different magical abilities as well as they go through this different, I guess, trials and challenges along the way. It is such a fun read and the world itself is incredible. Jessica Townsend has just done wonders. She is an Australian author as well, which makes me super proud. So yeah, if you have younger kids, if you yourself like middle grade, it's so worth following this series. Now, this book in particular was a bit eerie because it had the same themes that real life had especially last year because it because essentially this type of i guess species that lives amongst um the people in nevermore yes this, the city's called nevermore so this particular type of species that lives amongst everyone else in nevermore has started to fall ill and just become something different they realize that it potentially could be a virus and just I just felt like the parallels was really eerie, eerily similar to everything that's happening with the COVID. So it was weird because I like I read to get away from real life, but then also once you dive into this, you're kind of just facing the same things as well. But it is really interesting to see how Jessica Townsend addresses these things and the characters and how they deal with them. So yeah, I will have to say that I definitely prefer the first two books over this one. I think I gave this maybe a three and a half, four out of five stars. Moving on, and I read The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily XR Pan. This one follows a girl who has just recently lost her mother. She believes that her mother has come back in the form of a red bird. And from there, she follows the bird to her mother's hometown, where she meets her grandparents for the first time. It is to do a lot with, I guess... Uh, you know cultural traditions a fair bit of fantasy and mythical elements in there which I didn't really expect I think the expectation I had for this was quite different to what the story panned out to be I thought that it would just be you know a young girl trying to understand grief and come to terms with a loss of someone who's very very important in her life which it is but I didn't expect that fantasy element in it and for us to really believe that those things happened to her but I just don't know whether Emily XR Pan was trying to you know maybe make it seem like this was the main character's way of dealing with grief or whether those events really did happen and we need to believe that there is some kind of magic or fantasy element um, that can occur I don't I don't really know if I'm explaining it properly but it's a heartwarming read. It is quite sad at some points and it does address mental health issues. So there are trigger warnings in there for, you know, self-harm, depression, um, etc, etc. But I only, eventually I only gave this a three and a half out of five stars, which is lower than what I expected to be because I actually had quite high expectations for this. I do still think it's worth the read because I think everyone will gain something different out of it. But... Yeah. And then I read Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. Now this one here was one of my most highly anticipated reads of last year. I was really excited to read the Cinderella retelling. It centers around a girl named Sophia who is part of this town where Cinderella, you know, grew up in, lived in, married her prince about a hundred years back. Nowadays, it is basically compulsory for all young women to present themselves to the ball. From there, they are chosen by different men in this town. If they don't get chosen after attending the ball three times, then they're considered forfeit and are taken away from their family to, I guess, repay their debts or their labor in a different place. Now, Sophia is very, very much against this 
social norm or this social custom. She herself doesn't particularly adhere to these social standards. And from there, she tries to, I guess, save the women in this town, but also save herself from the fate that awaits her. An absolutely fascinating concept. So, so much to unpack or so much that Kaylin Brown, sorry, Kaylin Bayron wanted to unpack in there. There are so many important themes that should be addressed that have been drawn from real life things in this book. So for instance, LGBTQ plus uh, rights, you know, women standing up for themselves, equality, etc, etc. And I think this is a rare thing for me to say is that I wish this had become a duality, a duology at the very least, because it is a very small book and Bayron tries to address a lot in it. So much that I felt like the story and the characters weren't fleshed out as much as I hoped to. So it, I struggled a lot to develop attachments to Sophia and the other characters. I rooted for their cause because I believe in their cause and I understand why they're doing it. But there is so much history and so much background from this story as to what happened to Cinderella, why the town ended up being this way, what can they do, who these characters are. And a lot of it was just telling us as opposed to showing us. So I felt like if it was split over two different books or maybe made it a bit longer, it would have been better to immerse myself into the story a lot more. Yeah, so I just wish it had been fleshed out a bit better. I think because there were so many things trying to take over and, you know, to be meaningful and impactful and I get that. But for a book that's only... 300 almost 400 pages I just think that it didn't quite hit the mark so I only gave this a three out of five stars three and a half out of five stars the last book that I read for the month I am obsessed with this series and I am so sad that I am so late to this party this is the second book to the Poppy War series by RF Kwan this is the Dragon Republic now I'm sure you have all seen or heard raving reviews about this whether on booktube or on book twitter this is well worth the hype it is a high fantasy i want to say adult series and essentially set in an empire called mikara where there have been multiple wars already and multiple i guess figures trying to take over and control the empire and make it the way that they want and currently and in the current situation, or at least when the first book uh, starts, you follow a girl named Rin who is living in a region that is quite poor. She doesn't want to be sold off to marriage, so she enters an examination to get into like a really prestigious soldier school or academy. She gets in. Uh, she gets in and she thinks that things will change, but when she gets there, she realizes there's that, still that hierarchy and people will still see her in a very different light because she, you know, she didn't grow up in a privileged, rich family. Uh, she was never trained her entire life to be, to belong to the academy. But in the academy, she, they find out that she has these powers that can make her a very powerful shaman, which the academy hasn't really come by in the past few years. And then her story goes from there. Now in this second book, you can obviously follow along from what has happened in the first book but I have never ever ever been as enthralled reading a book about war and war strategies and you know death and conflict and just people sitting around trying to figure out how they're going to win a war as much as I have been now. I, I never would have expected it. There is something about Arif Kwan's writing style the way that she presents the story, the world building, the world building is immaculate. The characters as well, like they're buried deep inside of you and you can never ever let them go. I just think it's such an incredibly well-written, well worth reading. Just, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying more because I just, I don't know how else to express how much I love this. The one thing I will have to say is I still don't know whether I like Rin or not, which is interesting because she is the female or the, because she is the main character and you're supposed to root for her. And I do, but I think the problem I have with Rin is there are so many moments where she's like, oh, in hindsight, this would have been better. Or 
I realize that this could have been done this way or I realize that this shouldn't have happened. I get it. Like it's really relatable because we go through life and we're never going to be able to plan anything or see in the future and everything is always better in hindsight. But it's very frustrating to read because it seems so obvious to the reader but not to her character. But I guess this is her way for her character to learn. And there is a lot of growth in her that I can see and I'm hoping that by the third book I come to like her I guess but yeah I flew through this in two days which is amazing I am so sad that I don't have the third book as of yet but we'll get there would highly highly recommend this series Anyways, those are the four books that I read for the month. Hopefully March is a great reading month for me as well as for you. Please let me know what your favorite book for February was in the comments down below. Otherwise, I really hope you guys have a great day. I am kind of in the middle of filming a weekly vlog that I don't really know if I'm going to upload or not. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but if that does happen, it will come up or it will go out sometime during the end of this week. But yeah, I shall see you guys soon. Bye.